In today's video, we're checking out the brand new Lorcan guitar amplifier from Kalen. This is a practice amplifier. It's designed to either be on the desk or on the floor. This has a clean channel and a distortion channel built in. Also this analog delay circuit here. You're about to hear it in the context of a jam track, and then I'll run you through how it works and all of the kind of tones you can get with different guitars. A huge thanks to Kalen for sending this out for the review. I really appreciate it. If you want to check it out, I'll link it down below. Here we go. Up next, I'm going to share with you everything you need to know about the Kalen Lorcan amplifier. We get an 18 volt DC power supply input. This does come with its own external power supply. We can then charge the internal battery and run it just as is. So you don't need to have it connected to the wall all of the time. After several hours of use, I'm down to 50% battery. I like the fact there's an indicator on there. Good stuff. This is a two channel amplifier. We get one master volume control here, which is also our clean channel master. Then we can click in the distortion button over here and this becomes our volume control for the drive channel. We also get a tone and gain circuit. If you wanna use the delay effect, the button has to be in the down position. Off is in the up position. What makes this different to the Joyo Jam Buddy is we get three nine volt DC outputs that are designed to power pedals. You also get the cables included in the box. What this means is I can use either channel of the amplifier with my favorite effects and I don't need a secondary power supply for this. On this side of the amplifier, we get a headphone output socket as well as a dedicated line out. This one can be used to go into an audio interface or PA system mixer, whatever the case may be, and we'll test that in this video. If you plan on jamming with some backing tracks and you have an MP3 player, whatever the case may be, we get an auxiliary input over here. Just to let you know, this doesn't support Bluetooth whatsoever. So if you plan on playing to a backing track, you'll either need speaker set up elsewhere or you can use that auxiliary in. If we compare the Kalen Lorcan up against the Joyo Jam Buddy, you can see there's a huge difference, not only in the design, but also in the size. This does have far bigger speakers here at the top. Now this amplifier is designed for home practice at lower volumes. It's never gonna compete with the kind of volume you would find from a typical guitar amplifier. These are designed for either floor use or to sit them on a desk and you can get some really great tones out of it. I'm gonna test this amplifier out on the clean channel, distortion channel, with pedals, without pedals, all that kind of stuff, and I'll timestamp it down in the description below. Here we go. All right, let's get into it. I'm gonna start off on the clean channel of the amplifier with some analog delay enabled. I've got the level control, the mix control for the delay down at nine o'clock, so it's not overly prominent, but it's giving me something back other than a dry signal, which I'll show you in just a moment. So this is neck pickup. Delay off, so dry, clean tone. Still a nice big round clean tone, but let's add some reverb to that now, thanks to the Barn Owl. Just a little bit of reverb there, it sounds pretty great. And back with the analog delay on.
Clean Channel is extremely usable. Whether you're using an external reverb pedal or not, you can definitely get great tones out of it. Let's try the distortion channel and the amplifier now, starting with the gain and tone control, both at 12 o'clock with some analog delay. Here we go. <laughs> Sounds really cool. Let's crank the gain. Nice, and with the gain all the way up. Volume control down. Now when I've got the gain cranked on this, I am hearing a lot of white noise out of it, but once I start turning it down, even to about there on the dial, it's much lower in terms of its output noise. Sounds cool, it's got a nice big sort of round sound to it. Even though it's not loud, it still sounds good here in the room. Over to some humbuckers now, we're gonna check out the distortion channel. Now I've just mixed up the parameters. I've turned the gain back to about two o'clock. The tone is up to about two o'clock and this analog delay circuit is currently off. This is Bridge. <laughs> It's got a lot of sustain for an amp that has no reverb and it's very small. So overall that sounds awesome to my ear. Let's add some delay. never know. I thought I was able to get feedback, but it appears not. <laughs> and now with the gain almost cranked all the way up. Now one of the small limitations to this distortion channel, as great as it sounds, if you turn down, it doesn't really clean up. So let's have a listen. That's with my volume control just on. So if I turn it up. You can't hear a difference in the volume, but the gain structure is basically the same. So just keep that in mind. Up next, I'm gonna show you how the clean channel handles some overdrive pedals using some humbuckers. This is the clean tone. Green mumba. It's kind of based on the tube screamer. And now with the killer shark. Now the cool thing is, if you want more dynamics, you can run a pedal into the front end and then turn down. It's gonna clean up far better than the distortion channel did. Volume back down. So that's with two pedals on, all the way back up. Up next, we're gonna test out the line output. This can be used to go to a PA system, mixer, or audio interface. In my case, I'm recording 
directly out of this line out, so no microphones or anything. I think it sounds pretty good. Let us know what you think of this in the comment section. This is the distortion channel with some analog delay. <laughs> It's a really usable tone. Let us know what you think of that down below. And now let's try the clean channel going directly out into my audio interface. Now, interestingly enough, I'm looking at my waveform and it's not even close to clipping. It's like minus 16 dB or so and I'm having no issues with the input on my audio interface as I've got a visual representation of that, but I am hearing some clipping. I don't know if that's gonna translate through to the recording or if that's just my speaker doing something weird. So if it is doing something weird or not, I'll leave it on screen and I'll comment on this at the end of the video. But let's try that now with some overdrive, thanks to the green mamba. I can't hear that clipping at all with the overdrive in the circuit, which is weird. And the gain looks higher than before. So I'll comment on this in just a moment. Let's wrap it up. Thanks for watching folks. My name's Shane. I'm gonna wrap this video up by talking about the pros and cons of the Kalen Lorcan Practice Amplifier. So overall, this is a really fun unit. The clean tones sound great when you're sitting there listening to the speakers in the room and the distortion tone totally rocks. So if you're looking for a very functional amplifier just for jamming, that's not gonna wake the neighbors this would do a really great job. It heavily reminds me of this little guy right over here, one of my favorite practice amps, the Joyo Jam Buddy. It's essentially the same type of thing, but they've both got a different feature set. So the benefit of the Lorcan is it's much larger, meaning the speakers give you a much bigger sort of sound, but they're still not loud, but the overall fullness is there. So that's really cool. The analog delay circuit is very reminiscent of the one found in the Joyo as well. We both get built-in batteries, all that kind of stuff. But where this has an advantage is we get three outputs that we can power pedals with and we don't need an external power supply to do so. So that's really cool. You can power your pedals just by using this. Where the Joyo Jam Buddy clearly has an advantage is it has Bluetooth connectivity. So if you want to jam to a backing track, you have to use an auxiliary output. And my phone doesn't have a headphone output. So I wouldn't be able to use that unless I had an external MP3 player or something like that somewhere in the house here. I think I've got one somewhere. So just keep that in mind, that's maybe the only compromise. Overall, this is a really powerful little amplifier, but there's just a couple of things that I need to mention. First up, it comes with an 18 volt DC power supply that charges the internal battery, and you can also operate the unit while that's plugged in. I noticed with the power supply plugged in while I was playing guitar, I was noticing some buzz. So it sounds best with the power supply off. So fully charge it, then use it, and you'll be in business. That's an easy way of avoiding it. Also, after listening back to the audio, going from the clean channel out of this into my desk, I did notice some harmonic distortion, which wasn't clipping on my track. It was so safe on the levels. I never record anywhere near close to clipping. So that was recorded. But as soon as I clicked on the overdrive pedal, it went away. So I don't know what's going on there, but it's definitely worth mentioning. If you'd like to see a comparison between the Kalen and the Joyo practice amplifiers, let us know in the comment section. These are different to each other. While the format is very, very similar, they do sound different. And due to the speaker size and the physical size, you might pick one over the other, but we'll get to that in a separate video. A massive thanks to Kalen for sending this out. If you'd like to check it out, I'll link it down below. Catch you soon. See ya.